All right. My guess is... Hey, Kenny, it's Sean from Stereo Wolf. Hey, Sean, how you doing, man? Doing good, brother. Well... Just calling in. Well, Sean, I want to say thank you for joining me uh, this evening. And this is not the first time I've interviewed you. This is actually the second time. Um, That's right. <laughs> for, for those that may not know, um, it was in Halloween in 2011... I interviewed you when you was a member of a group called Lansdowne. And from my understanding, what you told me on Facebook uh, weeks ago, that you still write music for them, but you're not necessarily a part of the group anymore. You were fully focused on Stereo Wolf, correct? That's correct. So, man... Let's talk about Stereo Wolf and um, how did this this Stereo Wolf uh, came about? So I, um, after I parted ways with Lansdowne, I went to uh, Long Island to live for a little while, and I was living with a, a close friend of mine named Ryan Tiernan, who is a hip hop producer out there, and we just started making some music together, and uh, we were just writing, and it was a lot of great stuff, a lot of great collaborations, and so I decided to pursue it as a, uh, you know, start a group and, you know, get back on the horse with the band thing, and um, that's pretty much how it got going, just Ryan and I just sitting down, writing together, and, um, you know, just started, the, the music started flowing out, and it was a really great, uh, you know, great feeling music, and uh, it's having a good time. <laughs> What was it like going from being part of a rock slash alternative group to now being part of a, a group that does electronica slash pop music? What was the whole transition like? It's definitely it's definitely new, you know, a lot of people but I've had a lot of great response from, you know, fans of mine from Lansdowne. A lot of them have followed me over to Stereo Wolf, but um it's definitely uh a new experience and that's just something that I wanted to have you know I kind of got really jaded with the whole rock scene and uh, kind of over it really which is why I ended up leaving Lansdowne and um, I've always loved pop music and uh, it was just kind of like it's, I'm getting to explore some different uh, areas that I've never really had the, the opportunity to with rock and I'm definitely excited about the new direction. Well, let me just say from listening to the EP, Bad Business, uh, you know, Sean, it was very intriguing. Um, you point out some, some hip-hop, um, some sort of influence on this record, and I did hear you rap on one of these songs. <laughs> uh I, I forgot what was the name of the song you rapped on. Maybe it was Young Love. Maybe it's Lonely Hands. Um, but I like the record, man. Bad Business. The name of the EP. Uh, talk about what made you this. What made Stereo Wolf decide to name this project Bad Business? Uh, so it was kind of this thing that was uh, that Ryan and I kept saying while we were making the record and while we were talking to people that. The music industry is just so full of cutthroat people. Everyone's trying to do bad business to you. And so it was just kind of like some satire on the music industry. And uh, when you see the artwork, um, it makes a lot more sense. We have on the back just a bunch of, like, uh, like funny questions, like in setting up the track names, like, you know, what's the best way to steal someone's royalties, it's like set up so cool. I, I'll have to send you out a CD so you can see it because I'm not really explaining it that well. But yeah, it was just kind of some satirical, uh, you know, comedy on how we view the music industry because it really is full of people just doing a lot of bad business. Now that I think about it, that definitely makes absolute sense. And I've been interviewing a plethora of unsigned and indie artists, and they talk about how they feel about the music industry. And I guess it's mainly through major labels, especially uh, as far as they try to limit you or limit artists on how they should put out their music. And, you know, they sometimes they try to make it sound too gimmicky-esque. They try to make it sound like 
uh, just a, yet another trend, make it sound the same thing that you hear on the radio. And I mean, whatever happened to believing in the artist? You like what you're hearing the artist when you hear the demos or you hear in the YouTubes and and, and SoundCloud, the Reverb Nation, etc. Like. If you have faith in your artists, I mean, let them put out the music the way that they want to. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to be hearing the artist's voices, not the A&R's, not, not the exactly. record company. Um. So, yeah, I, I, I say just, look, if you believe in your artists, let them put the music out the way that they want to. You know, if it works, then more power to more power to the artists. If not, maybe they can try something different. But but at least as far as that first record, let them do what they want to do. Let them do what they want to do. Um, so absolutely, you got six songs on Bad Business. Um, and there's a a, a record called Wasted, and it's got an artist by the name of J. Rowe. That's the only collaborator you have on the Bad Business EP. What was it like working with Jay Rowe on the Wasted record? Jay Rowe is awesome. He's a, a rapper out of Long Island. I think everyone should definitely look him up on YouTube and check him out. He has a track called um, uh, Hate Your Face that I think is such a smash hit. Um, he also has a record called My Generation, which is really, really awesome. Uh, just talking about how our generation is and how we're perceived and, you know, things that we can do better. He's a great artist, and he came in. Uh, I really wanted to get a feature on the way to track, and it was really awesome working together. He came out of the studio, and it was really awesome to watch him, you know, come up with his verse. Uh, he kind of just didn't write a, a single thing down. He just came in, you know, listened to the track, probably seven or eight times, got it all formulated in his head, was in the booth and knocked it out pretty much one take. So I think he's an exceptional artist, a really, um, you know, great rapper, and I was excited to work with him. I definitely enjoyed that track. It definitely had my head nodding, you know, so... Um, it's, a, it's a party anthem, you know? Yeah, definitely a party anthem. It's definitely the type of music that people can listen to, especially with the spring weather approaches uh, as the weather gets warmer. It's just got that warm music appeal. Um, so I definitely enjoy. Uh, this, I hear you. I definitely so, a enjoy. A total summer track. Yeah, a absolutely. So the how many songs did Stereo Wharf worked on before it narrowed it down to the six songs for this EP? Oh, my God. The narrowing down was definitely the hardest part because we have – probably about not even going to lie 30 songs just sitting in the vault um that didn't go on this album that that aren't necessarily any better or worse than the songs that ended up going on we just wanted to make it all um cohesive and uh those were the six that we felt really we wanted to you know kick off um the stereo wolf family with and um so we definitely have a whole bunch of tracks that we are still working on that um, that we're still working on and that we have worked on and that, you know, we also want to get those out and we're excited to keep working and keep putting out music. So will there be or has it already been a tour or list of shows y'all going to be performing these songs uh, like any like a, a tour or concerts, anything like that to promote this record? Well, we did, um, we did when we released it, go on a Northeast run with Afro Man. We did, um, I think, uh, a week's worth of dates with him, which was awesome. Pretty much sold out venues at every show. That was a trip. And we also played with uh, Mr. Big in Rhode Island, I don't know if you'll remember them, but they did a, they had a big hit back in the day. Um, but February has been slow. It's tough with the winter, um, especially in the Northeast, because a lot of people lost, you know, snow all the time. It's been a crazy winter for us up here. And um, 
so it's tough really for shows in the winter, but now that spring's coming around, we're definitely going to start doing a lot more shows. Uh, and probably just concentrating on the Northeast for now while we build our fan base, but we're hoping to expand as soon as we can and uh, take our show to the rest of the United States. And I, I'm definitely aware of the, the, the tour that y'all did with Afro Man. A lot of people know him from his hit single, I Want to Get High. Uh, and yep, yep. Uh, yeah, and obviously he's still working on music to this day. What was it like getting the chance to, to be on tour with Afro Man? Oh, man, it was a blast. Uh, this guy comes out on stage, you know, he's a big Afro, but he comes out and he's wearing this, you know, to the floor, white pimp coat with a cane, wearing a, a green, uh, you know, three-piece suit. <laughs> He is hilarious, and he kills it on stage. He's got it. He actually, I don't think a lot of people know this, but he comes with a DJ, but he plays a double neck guitar while he rocks it, rapping live. He is hilarious. He's a riot. He came over. Our last show was at Wally's in Hampton Beach, and um, that's where I live currently right now, and our house is right next to the venue. And he came over with his brother, who's his store manager, and his DJ afterwards, and party with us for the night, and it was, it was a blast. He's such a great guy, and he's still making great music, and he knows how to get the honeys shaking their butts, let me tell you. Or oh, as people like to say nowadays, twerk. Um, you know, twerking. <laughs> twerking. <laughs> Hashtag um, twerk. We're, we're not talking Molly Cyrus type of twerking, especially when she really ain't got that much of a backside to be shaking. I mean, no. No, yeah. we're talking the real deal. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> you, you, you really got to have a little extra, extra on the back side in order to be considered. Something has to actually move in order for yeah. it to be considered twerking. I, I totally agree. Yes. So, um, <laughs> God almighty. So, uh, Sean, um, what else do you have in the works, man? And in addition to now, this is an EP, so uh, eventually... I'm assuming y'all yeah, gonna want to work on a full length uh, LP. Uh, so, uh, what else does Stereo Wolf have in store in 2014? Uh, well, hopefully a lot more shows in a lot more cities and states, and definitely working on new music always. We want to be putting out songs all the time, so definitely keep an eye out for maybe it might be another EP, maybe a mixtape or a full length. We're not sure yet. On that front, we're still kind of riding the bad business wave for now, uh, but definitely a lot more music videos on our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Stereo Wolf Music. Uh, we have a video for the song Lonely Hearts up on there right now. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, getting to hang out with a lot more fans and just, you know, really start building up the band because, like I said, we're a new project uh, and it's, a, you know, different coming from a band that was touring with names like Puddle of Mud and, you know, doing real big tours, coming and starting, you know, from the bottom. So we're just excited to be building up this new project. Start off from the bottom, and now you're here. Now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to quote uh, Drizzy Drake, um, you know, that being said, I mean, it's, it's great to hear from you again, Sean. You know, you're going for one genre to a whole different genre and you make it work and I mean congrats on the, the Bad Business EP and um, for people that want to learn more from Stereo Wolf they are on Facebook and you can follow them on Twitter at Stereo Wolf Music one word put together no underscores in between and again Sean it was great the chat with you again, first time in three years, over three Absolutely, years. Absolutely, Kenny. It's, it's definitely been a long time, but it's nice to see that you're doing music and 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 you're still good terms with Lansdowne. So that's that's definitely. Oh, absolutely. So, Those guys are my brothers for life. So so that's that's awesome itself. Uh, thank you for your time, Sean. Appreciate it. Best of success goes out to you, and maybe we won't have to wait another three years for me to interview you again, man. Definitely be back. Absolutely, a, a lot sooner rather than later. Uh, but th uh, you have a good night, and thank you for your time, Sean. Thank you, Kenny. All right, you have a good night. You too. Thanks. All right, bye bye. That was Sean from Stereo Wolf.